I don't think I can go on. I know you can't. You need that girl. I'm supposing she won't come. She must be made to come. No. Have you any choice? No. She's a doctor. Once she's here, she'll understand. Well, she mustn't be harmed. If she's harmed, she wouldn't be any use to us, would she? So be it. White Cross? Yes. Yes, it is. Are you well? Yes, we are very well. And you? Yeah, we're fine. Well, where are you from? Dunning Farm, near Evesham. And how many of you are there? Just the two of us. No, I mean at the farm. Oh, not many. Twelve. We've been there since the summer. We tried to find you at the Grange place, but it was burned down. Yes, that's right. We saw your notice there, saying that you'd come on here. You mean you were looking for us? Yes, that's right. We were told how to get to the Grange so that we could find you. Your name wouldn't be Greg, would it? Yes. Ah, then we have some regards to give you, Greg, from a lady called Abby Grant. What? No, please. Better to keep apart. We are well, but others of us are not. Yes, you're right. Well, where are they? Did you find Peter? Oh, yes, yes, she did. He's with her. She found him. Never give up, Greg. Well, where are they? They're at Denning. But they're ill. She said you had a doctor here, Ruth. Yes, that's right. Have you still got that doctor? Yes, she's here. Well, what's wrong with them? It sounds like a kind of toxemia. Blood poisoning. I won't know till I get there. How long do they say they've been at this place? Well, since the summer. Abby must have been on her way back. Well, there's something about it I don't like. What? I don't know. Can't put my finger on it. Do you want to take a look? Well, I'd like to see Abby again. Oh, yes. No. They've probably got an epidemic. Stay away. It's a very good point. They were being very careful. What about Ruth? I don't have much choice to her. Well, I don't know. I still don't like it. I mean, why haven't we heard of these people before? Well, we'll get your exact route from you, as usual. We have a route from you. Which road you're taking? Yes, most certainly. Uh, the B4219, 
till det tills de uh, A38, then the A40 and the A44 to Evesham. Just before Evesham there is uh, a hill and a bridge. You take a little track to the left and uh, the third branch, the middle branch of three, and that's us. It'll take you through the town of Pershaw, won't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Did you actually go through Pershaw? Yes. What about infection? Uh, oh, no, we, we skirted around it. Uh, we didn't go through it. No, of course not. Uh, a little to the south. Well, what about Abby, before she became ill? Was she still our plump little self? <laughs> You're checking on us now. <laughs> I think they are. Abby is tall and slim. She's younger than me. She had her hair all cut short. It's growing now. OK. Pass. Is there nothing you want? Oh, no, thank you. No, we got food and drink and a stove, uh, things like that. We should be there before night. This one. I'm Ruth, the doctor. Hey, Where no! No, don't go near him. Where are they? Who? The people who are ill. Abby is not here. What's going on? I'm afraid we had to practice a little deception. Where's Abby? London. Just the four lads here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them. London? Look, we keep our distance from people we meet, from him, from your friends, so as not to touch them with what we bring from London. But you are contaminated now, being with us. You can't go back to your friends. You will kill them. Contaminated with what? We don't know. We call it the London sickness. And you too have it? We don't know. What are the symptoms? You feel very tired sort of paralyzed with it. Then you need treatment. We are pushing our luck coming out as far as this. Yeah, but we've got a hospital in London. We've got doctors, x-rays, the lot, and we want to get back there. All right, yes, there is a lot of disease in London, but we're all right there. We're well looked after. You've got a doctor. Why do you need me? Well, Abby sent for you. She told us where you were. She asked us to come and get you. She wants you. She, she said that you would come. You said she was ill? Yeah. And her son? Yes. What's wrong with them? Look, love, you really don't have the choice. Gave me ten gallons and a thousand cigarettes. Well, for the lads, like, and matches. And makeup. Yeah, and a hospital. Soap. Yes, yeah, soap, balm. We got everything. We got electric light. I think we should be off. It is urgent. I'm not coming. Please. Abby must take her chance. You have a doctor. My friends need me. Not only them. There are other settlements. In London, they need you more. You've got to come. I haven't got to come, and you can't make me. Please. You know we can, but don't force us to. It will be very unpleasant. What about you? Are you going to stand by and let them do this? I don't know what you're on about. Our slot probably won't be far behind you once we get the car going. Things are great there, by the sound of it. What about my friends? Oh, that'll be taken care of, Ducky. He's, uh, 
He's gonna send someone. I wonder. One of the lads. I'm sending him. Disinfect the cut. Yeah, all right. Use all I give you. Okay, don't worry. feel terrible. Look, I'm sorry. Please don't be scared. It's just that we couldn't very well walk up to you in your settlement and say, come to London, will you? And you just said no. Would I? Well, wouldn't you? That's why we pretended we came from that place. You said a lot of people. How many? You've been told to say nothing till you see for yourself. Be frozen. Thank you. How long would it take us to get to Denning Farm? Well, if you left early enough, I suppose you could get there and back in a day. Mm, I'd love to see Abby again. Well, I don't think it'd be wise just yet. Not for sickness, though. Got to think of Paul. Well, so have you. Anyway, I don't mean now. Uh, all the same, I'd, I'd like to take a ride over there. Greg. Don't worry about that smell. It's London. It's the funny thing about that smell. In a few hours, you won't even notice it. A cigarette, please. Have one. No. Go on, it helps. For. Rats. You better get your gear together now. We're not going to have a chance once we get out. Rats with those things. The noise helps to keep them off. I can't get this thing any closer. go in packs. If you meet one of them on its own, that means it's dying. But it is just as dangerous. Please come. Fires. To be scientific, they are started by spontaneous combustion. Heaps of bodies. Or heaps of something. I don't know. Who's there? 
You won't get rid of me. I'll get back. You see. I'll get back. Put your things on. south now, under the river. It's messy, but the big danger is flooding. Yeah. I never did like going under the river. Come on now. our petrol supply coming in. Hello, Benji. This way, please. More rats? Yes. We go up this way now. When we go out, stay in the light. It keeps the rats away. Turn it off. They're in now. Well, be the new doctor. This is George. I'm glad you're here. I'll just check you didn't bring anything in with you. Yeah, OK. okay. We like family shows mostly. Hey, what's on? Laurel and Hardy. Oh. <laughs> See. Yeah. Come on. Now look. There is someone here who will answer all your questions. Karen. Oh. Hello, Manny. Penny, you're back. You yeah, made it. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Doctor. Well, I'm sorry they had to bring you like this. Put your gear down and shake hands. I'm Manny. I know your roof. Well, come on, love. You're here. Welcome. All right, Uncle? All right, Manny. Thank you. Everybody's very grateful to you. That's all right. I'll clean up now. See you later. OK, great. How was it? Oh, not bad. They risked their lives to bring you here. Bring me where? 
Haven't you told her? No. Right, hang on. Hello, Manny. Yep. Yep, she's here. All in one piece. Well, a bit shell-shocked. Yeah. Yeah, they had to. You coming over? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, that's all right. I understand. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, see you. This is what you might call my private exchange. It doesn't go very far, just round the house. The radio goes further. Well, come on. Grub up in five minutes. Ruth? Oh, come on, love. How was the tunnel? How do I answer that? Well, well what I mean it is... It was dry. Good. If it had been wet, you wouldn't have got through. The river would have all slopped over. We've been waiting for that to happen. Here, have a cigarette. Oh, thanks. You'd have had to come round a long way. Where's Abby? Well, I wish I knew. I thought she was a nice girl, a bit bossy, but I liked her. You told me she was here. Well, she was, Ruth, honestly. She was standing right where you are now. I remember when she first came here. Yeah, she was looking for her son, Peter. I was told she'd found him. Well, I had to play that by ear, didn't I? All she cared about was that boy of hers. I mean, we tried to stop her leading. She wouldn't listen to reason. Just off, just like yeah. that. I mean, I was very sorry. She'd have been useful here. When did she go? About a month ago. She won't have lasted long. You abducted me. I'm sorry. We had no choice. I had my orders. Ruth. Get me out of here. Please. Please, Ruth. Don't think too badly of us. Come on through. Come on. Oh, come on, Ruth. Come on. Well, now, what have we got here? God, roast duck. Well, I wonder where that came from. Buckingham Palace Gardens or the Serpentine? Well, make a change from pigeons and uh, sprouts. Winter greens. Come on, Ruth, please, be my guest. Hot water, Ruth. And soap. I'll tell you what. I'll play you a tape that Mac picked up at his radio. Mac's our radio expert. You mean a broadcast from outside? Yeah. Mac's been trying for a year. This is the first time he's got anything. Come and listen. Listen to this. Come to the Malik in Cairo. Come to the Malik in Cairo. There are only 12 people here. The people have food and fuel. Come to the Malik in Cairo. That's it. When was that broadcast? About six weeks ago. Mac tried to call them back, but he reckoned they didn't know about the set. This guy called every day for four days. Then nothing. Here, Ruth. Good girl. Why have you brought me here? Look, all right, no. all right, all right, all right! Sorry. That extra place was set for the doctor. He was going to eat with us and answer all your questions. Now, he can't be here, because when I called him just now, he got an emergency. Take me to him. All right, love. Nessie, this is Ruth. Come in, come in, Doctor. I'm the matron, assistant surgeon, anaesthetist and general factotum. My name's Nessie. We're not aseptic in here. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? 
Yes, that's his lordship there, the doctor. I'm very glad you're here. Come and have a look at this. You didn't qualify? No, I did four and a half years. That's fair enough. This man has what we call the London sickness. The first cases were about two months ago. Rapid onset, slight fever. When he's conscious, sharp-witted and acute fatigue in all his muscles. I don't know what it is. It's years since I did any medicine, proper medicine, I mean. I was a health officer. But here we are. Come and sit down, please. I heard about you from Abbey Grant. My dear, I knew that if I could just talk to you, I could persuade you to help me. So, uh, I'm afraid I had you brought here. I'm really sorry about it. Please forgive me, but I had you. Now, uh, may I fill the background in for you? Yes, please. Well, about a year ago, when the plague struck us, I seemed to be the only doctor left in London. I met Manny. Uh, you've met him? Yes. Well, he managed to keep a couple of generators going and built up an organization. With some help from the doctor? Yes, Nessie, we were in it together. Then Nessie came along and propped us up. He's waking, Doctor. Ah, come. Hello, Mac, how are you? This is Ruth, another doctor. Say hello. He knows what's going on, don't you? Are you the radio engineer? I heard a tape of yours. That's right. Can we do a little test, Mac? Can you blink five times? Thanks, Mac. We're going to get you well. We need you. God knows we need everyone. Look, would you mind explaining to me? How's your biochemistry? What's weariness caused by? Lactic acid in the tissues. Not being properly degraded. Mm. Have you come across this? No. Well, it seems to be peculiar to London, the London sickness. Our main work here is medicine, not surgery, except for emergency and orthopedic. We don't have a blood bank, but we do have radiography. How many? Londoners? Well, there were about a thousand. A lot of them ill with typhoid, a dysentery sort of thing. And the number fell right down to about 500. Alarming, but uh, it's fairly stable now. We have as many births as deaths. 500 Londoners we are. A man, he must have told you that we forage. Yes. I suppose you can get just about anything. Well, we've no blood or serum. We have some fresh food and vegetables. A high sickness rate. How high? 10%. 50 patients in various stages. Cuts and scratches go septic. There seems to be a general poison in the atmosphere, so we pump everybody full of antibiotics. How is he? Going. We don't know about the London sickness. Mac. Mac. Poor fellow. I'll do the autopsy, but I shan't find anything. I don't know what to look for. When did he get ill? Three days ago. You see, Ruth, as a statistician, I know that our 500 souls have about 100 breeding pairs, right? Yes. About 100 couples who can have children. And that's the lower limit for the human race. If we sink below that, we have a fair chance of extinction in a few generations. Uh, like your settlements. They won't survive, they're too small. London's about the only place on earth where so many people would be together still after the sickness. Or maybe Tokyo, New York, but we haven't heard from them. We heard from Cairo, 12. If you want my opinion, I don't think there's any chance of lasting out here. That's from what I've seen. Nessie? Nessie! He 
He hasn't got the sickness. He's just weary. He's all right. What? Oh, sorry. Will you do the surgery tonight, Doctor? Me? No, she won't. Ruth has a decision to make. We forced her to come here. I'd like you to have a peaceful night, Ruth, and consider it. Consider what? Oh, I consider it right. I'll do the rounds. We have quite a bit of equipment here. Two trained nurses and Nessie. Some children who've done science at O-level. We're trying to teach them. We need to start a medical school. I'll get someone to show you your room. Sorry, was I staring? Did I say welcome? Oh, yes. Well, here you are, then. They gave me a lick of paint for you, and uh, I had a go at those curtains myself. We'll have some supper sent in for you in a minute. Well, Ruth, I, I hope you'll be comfortable. Can you give me a few minutes before supper? Yeah, sure. Right then. It's all right. I'm quite well. That's as may be. Who are you? What you want? My name's Greg. I'm looking for a woman called Abby. Abby Grant. Who? This is Denning Farm, isn't it? Yeah. I'm looking for a woman and her son. Abby and Peter. They're both ill. No one like that here. Well, there is a settlement here. <laughs> what? Some people. <laughs> Just the four lads and me. What about Ruth? Who? Look, a man and a woman came from here looking for a doctor. Now, where are they? The man was Indian. Oh, them! Well, they didn't stop. They went on. Well, they went on where? London! What? In a car. Range Rover. They borrowed my horse and car. Don't know why. Said I got to disinfect it. Daft. Or did they leave a route? Did they say which roads they were taking? Oh, you mean one of their maps? Yeah, they gave us some, you know, for when we go. Do you want one? They said to give them out. Could you get me one? Yeah. Uh, uh, just a minute. Um, well, Ruth, uh, the, the younger one. Well, didn't she leave a message to get in touch with her friends? No. Nothing. <laughs> Cross my heart. Well, could you get me one of those maps? As quickly as you can.
This is Manny, the center. I got a bit of sad news about poor old Mac. His troubles are over. And we're going to miss him at radio. Still, an enormous good wish for us all, whatever we're doing today, young and old. That's all. Call you in an hour. Morning, Doctor. Did you sleep well? Yes. This is the Oval, isn't it? Yes, the Oval Cricket Grounds. Were you a keen follower of cricket? No. Well, I saw two matches here. One was uh, Surrey against Nottinghamshire, and the other was uh, the last test match. I wasn't a keen follower. Some of them were. Well, as you see, we have here eggs, milk, and we are going to have uh, our own vegetables and some corn, I believe. How do you keep the rats out? Electric fence. And we are very, very careful. Dr. Ruth, anywhere? That's you. The doctor is here. Could you come to the surgery as soon as convenient? OK. He's having a sleep. He was up most of the night. Well, have you come to a decision? How can I come to a decision? It's being forced on me the same as coming here was forced on me. I see. While you're making up your mind, Doctor, will you be so kind as to help in one or two cases? If I can. Good morning, everybody. And how are we all this morning? I've brought you a new doctor. Dr. Ruth. She's come to have a look at us, so we'll have no more grumbles, will we? Well, Kevin, my lad, and how did you sleep? Did you take your breakfast? Sit up a wee bit now. Hello. What's your name? Maisie. What are you here for, then? Hello. You've been having toothache. Have I? It says here they took out a tooth. Open. Back one. Was it a big one? Yeah. And you're taking your pills? Yep. Do you think it was your big black tooth that gave you the tummy ache? Yeah. You don't have any fever. I think you can get up today and help. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Manny. Just to say, we're going to have a funeral for Mac this afternoon, after the doc's done his report. I'm also going to take over the radio. He's been reading it up. Well, I'm going out now to have a look at the coal situation at Battersea, because we're going to run low soon. I'll tell you tonight if I've had any luck. TDFN. Doctor. Hello, Doctor. My name's Barbara. Hello, Barbara. How are you? Well, I need to be up and about. We mustn't rush things. How's the cut? <laughs> it wasn't a cut. It was just a scrape. One can't do anything here, but it goes bad. You still have some fever. I have to get back to work. Well, how long shall I be here? Until everything's behaving itself. There's no point in getting up before then. Um, may I explain? Please. I'm the planner for all these people. I was in the civil service before, so I know a bit about logistics. I thought Manny did all the planning. Well, he does the day-to-day. -day, but I'm planning the big move. The big move? The one you're here for. We can't do the move without a doctor at either end. Oh, yes, of course. That's why I have to be working. Well, moving 500 people is a big logistical problem. And the doctor wouldn't be content with anything less than 500. He says it's the minimum needed for the human species to survive. Yes. The only trouble is, I don't really know enough about the other end. The other end? The Isle of Wight. Oh, yes, of course. I don't know how much clearance is involved and what the fuel and power situation is. I mean, it, it's always been at least a two-year plan to get the agriculture going and the life support systems. And frankly, I don't see how it can be done any quicker. 
But at least I can make sure that the lines of communication work. And now that you're here, he can send out an advance party. Yes. I think we should go across country from here on. It'll take longer. Take even longer if one of those throws a shoe. Anyway, we don't know what we're going to meet in London. Might have to move in a hurry. All right. Well, which way do you want to go? Well, can you see any water there? A running water. Yeah, there's River Kennet. You could water the horses there and then follow it down as far as Reading. Yes. Right, good. We'll have some grub at the river. With any luck, we'll be in London by nightfall. Someone behind us. Watch it. Come on, Wally. You're in the wrong place. Move. Where to? Come on, start walking. I can't live out here. Hard luck. Get moving. You've been vaulted out, remember? Hey, you should have behaved yourself. You've been naughty. Naughty boys get sent outside. Now go on, get back to the rats. Start walking! No cold? It's all under the river. We can't get near it. We just have to look for some other dumps. Who's available, do you know? Oh, um, get me Barbara. Barbara's still in the wood. I thought she was supposed to be back on the job. Has she had a relapse? No. Ah, oh, kill that, Nessie. She's kept Barbara off just to spite me, just because I went straight to the dock. She's power mad. All right, where's Barbara? I said, where's Barbara? Good evening, Emmanuel. Had a good day? Now, you listen to me, you wizened old woman. Wise old woman, please. I thought Barbara was supposed to be back on the job. Was she? Well, look, you know the doc agreed this morning. Now, which doctor do you mean? Do you mean to tell me that Ruth can't demand what the doc said? Oh, look, Nessie, I've got to have Barbara back on the job. I've got to get that coal organised or we'll all freeze to death. And I've got to get the... Hello, Barbara. Go to bed, Barbara, and dressed. I'm all right, really. You mean you're discharging yourself that strictly against the rules? I know. Dr. Ruth said you need peace and equilibrium to clear your tummy up. I'm going down to the office. Don't stop me. <laughs> well, that's all right, then. You all right? What do you mean? You're looking pale. And were you limping when you came in? Me? No. You're not getting your evil hands on me, Nessie. I'm fine. Yes? Don't get up. I just came to say Barbara's discharged herself. Oh. Oh, well, that'll be all right. I was just playing safe. Yes, I know. Maybe for the next week or two, you could bring me into these decisions. Yes, of course. That is, if you're staying. Or are you just gradually slipping into the job rather than making your mind up? It's the same thing. If you say so, Doctor. I would like to know because you're lying there and the Doctor's only mortal, you know. I'm sorry. I mean, go if you want. And spoil the big move? You weren't supposed to know about that. Who told you? Manny? No. Why wasn't I supposed to know? The Doctor has his reasons. Yes. Like not wanting me to know that I'm earmarked for the advance party. Whether you go or not is entirely up to you. 
You know very well I can't get out of London on my own. Your friend Abby Grant did. How do you know? Most of them come back sick, but she didn't. That's probably because she's dead. God, look at that fire. Don't they know coal's hard to come by? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, Doc, I didn't see you. Oh. Oh, I slept for two hours. Marvellous. Good. I crept in here and your warmth and comfort were too much. I'll put the light on. No, no, no. Uh, I wouldn't mind a cup of tea. Ness is doing the wards. Ruth's on surgery. How is she? Ruth. Oh, we'll give her time. Her medicine's better than mine, but her uh, surgery's a bit uh, tentative. Can't really afford to be tentative with surgery. Well, you don't get too much of that. Surgery? Not yet. Well, I'm glad you persuaded her to stay. You're looking more rested already. I haven't. What? Persuaded her to stay. Well, she's got to. You can't force her to stay. You want to bet? She's a doctor, and as such, she won't be any use to us unless she's free to make her own choice. Well, where are we? Where do we go? Uh, says follow line eastwards to Ealing Broadway. <sighs> Through some way for tickets? Through some way for tickets.
Centre. Get it attended to. Centre? Get it looked at or you've had it. It'll go rotten as soon as blink. Come on. This way. Where's the centre? The oval. I'll take you. A cane? Yeah, that's right. Don't beat you up. I'll turn your trousers in. The rats get everywhere. Where are you from? West country. You must be out of your minds. What are you doing here? I was looking for someone. A girl called Ruth. We had directions. And she was brought here by an Indian chap and a woman with blonde hair. About five days ago. Yes, that's right. Have you seen it? Sure. I see everything. All are coming and going. Hey, she's a doctor. That's right. Look. How far is it? Is that leg all right? Yeah, I think so. Let's just get there. It's quite a way. What? Along the tracks? Yeah. You can't move in the streets, what with everything. And even if you could, there's the rats. This doctor. Is he a friend of yours? Yes. You put in a word for me, will you? Why? What for? We don't see eye to eye. And what with her being a doctor and you having a bit of influence, like, I might listen to you. How are you feeling? Who are they? You'll find out, mate. Well, how many of you are there? There was 500 of them. And one of me. I'm not suggesting we rush things, but we can make a start. Well, she's only been here a week. She isn't concerned with the preliminaries. Well, not in your department, perhaps. But the medicines and drugs have got to be catalogued. You're right back in form, aren't you, Doc? Manny, it's a lengthy job. The sooner we get started, the better. Well, you think I don't know that? Barbara's only back in circulation because of me. To my way of thinking, the ball's in her court. No, it's in yours. Mine? But you do the planning? You make the decisions. Well, I do my modest best. Well, we've got to decide on transportation. The present situation... Well, there's no coal for a start. Well, that means petrol or diesel oil. Well, how much we got? If we're going by rail, it'll have to be diesel. Clever girl, our Barbara. Keep in the light. We're going to cross the road. Who? You're joking. Right, I'll let him in. What are you doing here? You brought these two men. Well, who are you? The friends of the doctor. The woman doctor. Said so. They did. Oh, did they? I can vouch for them. Molly, you shouldn't be here. You are in big trouble. I had to show them the way. 
All right. Give me your gun. You can't take them any further until you give me your gun. Out. What? Out, Wally. Quick! Hey! You're the one who came to White Cross. Yes, I'm sorry about it. Now, well, where's Ruth? She'll be in her surgery. Oh, Get back across the road before we turn the lights off, Wally! What's he done? He's a lot of trouble, that boy. He can't come in. We've decided. What kind of trouble? Just trouble. He's been put out to cool. Yeah, well, he just saved us from the rats back there. It is not my decision. Yeah, well, whose? So, you must be Greg. And you're Charles. <laughs> Heard a lot about you. My name's Manny. He's the boss. Welcome to town. Well, where's Ruth? In her surgery, I suppose. Oh, you remember Penny? Oh, I expect they do. Ruth tells me that you're an architect. Yes, I was. And you're an engineer. That's right. Well, that's great. Great! We're short of talent. Yeah, well, you still are. Just as soon as Charles' leg's fixed up, we're getting out of here. And we're taking Ruth with us. What's wrong with his legs? Rat bites. I'm all get him to surgery. Don't waste any time. Certainly. Oh, uh, gentlemen, if you don't mind, we don't carry guns here. Amal will take them to the armory. This way, please. I don't like it, Manny. No. I think we might be in for a bit of trouble. The sooner we get back, the better. Don't rush me. How's it feel? It hurts. Oh, we're well equipped. Got to say that for him. I suppose I've been expecting you. But you should have had more sense. Ruth, you all right? Yes. I'll leave you now. What oh. have you been up to, then? A uh, slight altercation with a pack of rats. Well, take your trousers off and jump up here. I won't pretend that I'm not glad to see you, but you were nuts to come after me. Now, what do you expect us to do? The vote was unanimous. Don't think I'm not grateful. It's just that it may be some time before you get out of here again. You know, we're all getting out of here just as soon as you finish with Charles. It's not as easy as you think. You mean the rats? No, oh, we've learned to cope with those the hard way. These are nasty. Rats are only part of the story. There's a sickness here that's just not in the textbooks which makes it very dangerous for anyone to move away from this hospital. They call it the London sickness, and that's what's keeping people here. You mean that's what keeps you here? Ruth? Ruth, you're our hospital. I know there aren't many of us, but we need a doctor too. Roll up your sleeve, anti-tetanus. There are 500 people here. 500 people with a sickness rate of 10%. Don't moan. But look, just Thank a minute. There's already a doctor here. I mean, the chap that brought us, Wally, said there was one. Yes, that's true. So what you're really saying is that you want to stay. I have no choice. Oh, come on. You're not a prisoner. I have to stay for the big move. The what? Manny's plan is to move us all to the Isle of Wight. Oh, great. And when's that going to happen? It'll have to be done in stages to get the amenities and the agriculture going. But it can't be done unless we have a doctor and a hospital at either end. Yes, but when? As soon as it can be organized. Well, weeks, months, years? I don't know. Well, it'll have to be years if it's a question of, of, of working the land. It'll have to be sooner than that. I don't see how it can be unless a start's already been made, and has it? No. Look, I'm not interested in any London sickness Greg, big move listen. to the island. There was a radio engineer here who died five days ago. For 14 months, he's been sending messages out all over the world. Now, the only voice he picked up was from Cairo. There are 12 people there. 12. Here in London, there are 500 at the moment. It's been worked out, the doctor has worked out, that with less than 500 people, the human species becomes extinct. It won't take very long. The 500 people here in London is the lowest limit. That's anybody's guess. It's been worked out. Now you know why I was brought here and why I can't leave. I was told your friends were here. This is the doctor, Greg and Charles. In the circumstances, I won't say welcome to London. Forgive my not being here. You're in good hands. Yes, I know. I feel I've had more sleep this past week than in a year. We came to take her back. 
Yes, of course. Has Ruth explained the situation? Yes. Then you'll understand why we need her here. And you, too. I'll take my own time. All right, well, what's going to happen? I don't know. I don't think it's an excuse. Oh, really? Go in. Go in, Wally. Okay. Yeah, sure, I understand that. Right, now, um... How are we off for potatoes? Oh, we got masses, then. Oh, love, don't tell me we got masses. How much? Well, we got about 480 sacks in store, and we should have another 250-odd in a couple of months. Oh, that's great. Right, now, um, let's get on to the tin stuff. Beans? Yeah, we got uh, 60 cases. Permission to sit, granted. I'll cut it out. I'll say this for you, Wally. You're a brave man. OK, George, Tom. They give us something to eat. The prisoner ate a hearty meal, sir. Who's the prisoner? Oh, come on, Wally. Let's have a little chat. I mean, let's try and get somewhere. Yeah, look, why won't you be reasonable, Wally? That's all we want. Nobody wants trouble. Hello, Doc. We're ready for you. How's your mate, Craig? Oh, he's been looked at. Hello, Wally. You well? I'm still alive. Good. Is this a court? No, oh, no. It's all informal. Oh, well, that's something. Greg, do you know this chap, Wally? Yeah, well, he brought us here. I saved his life. And so? Yeah. What's he done? A face doesn't fit. Oh, come on, Wally. That's just not true. All right, all right, all right. Great. I'll fill you in a detail or two. Wally here, nice lad, survivor like you and me. So what does he do while we all try and keep going? Can I say something? When I had my say, Wally I boy. didn't come through all this to live in a fascist state. Oh, Wally, how old are you? 24, 25? What do you know about fascist states? I've been around long enough to know which way things are going here. Greg, listen. Everything here is discussed, then agreed. But that's never been good enough for him. He's got to go his own way. So there's always bother. Things that should get done, don't get yeah, done. Yeah, that's the trouble. So we had a big democratic election, him or me. And what do you think? It was down near 500 for me, five for him. So we asked him to behave. And what did you say? Not under fascism. Not under fascism. So we told him he could make all the decisions he wanted to, on his own, out there in the country. But you didn't go. You know, I can't live out there. People do. Not from London. Wally, you want to come back in again, don't you? Well? Yeah. Greg, would you trust him? With what? We need a messenger to go back to Greg's settlement and tell them what's happened. Now, if you're given directions and you're sensible and keep away from anyone out there, you can do an important job, Wally. I've said that I'd rather go myself. No, I know, Greg. Yeah, we all know, but we need you here. You're an expert. I see. I get it. Dangerous mission. If anything happens, like getting sick, you won't miss me, but you'll miss him, right? If you want to put it that way, Wally, right. But if I do go and I get back alive, will you let me in? Yeah. Yeah, it'll prove you're behaving yourself, won't Will you? he let me in? If no, you... you wouldn't. I give you my word. I'll go. If... He lets me in. He will. I want to hear it from him. Manny keeps a nice hotel. Cook came from the Dorchester. He was a waiter, but he had ambitions. Well, there are one or two compensations. You still think I'm mad? No. Not exactly raving. A trifle gullible, perhaps. Look. If the doctor says it takes 500 people to maintain our species, then I'm not going to argue with him. But what I do disagree with is the fact that we seem to be caught in a situation that has no options. Look, why is there no panic about the disease catching up with medicine? Don't the people here know about it? They don't want to know. So they put all their faith in the hospital. It's a dicey business. They could panic. That's why it's important to have strong leadership. Well, like Manny? No, the doctor. Uh, I've been through all this before. I'm not interested in saving the human species. I want to save my family and my friends. What happens when your baby grows up and has children? Well, I don't know. But there'll be something. Rather the doctor's point, isn't it? How long ago did Abby leave? Six, seven weeks. And she didn't make it. 
Would she have come back to us? Not necessarily. She didn't say where she was going. No, she'd have come back. We'll give you this dose to see you on your way. Take a capsule every four hours and you'll be back tomorrow. I've given you two days' worth, but you'll not be needing it, will you, son? Not if I get back. You see and get back. So, capsules, soap, and don't forget to boil any water you drink. All right. I'm not stupid. I don't think you're stupid, son, but we don't want to lose you. He does. No, he doesn't. You're a great nuisance, son, but that's no reason to condemn you to death. Is it, dear Emmanuel? Now, away you go and get your instructions from these folk and see me tomorrow as soon as you get back and we'll all be friends. If I get back tomorrow night, will you let me back in? Sure. The idea might have been to send him off for the wee bit confidence. Well, I, I don't want to see him again. But you'll let him in if he does get back. I'll think about it. He's one of the 500, Manny. He's not just trouble, Nessie. He's dangerous. Oh, he's had a bad week down there. Give him a chance and stop the Napoleon Act. Napoleon? You're more hungry for power than I am. And you know it. Manny, God forbid you should ever fall ill, Manny. Twenty-two male, 144 female fit and well, 89 children under 15, 69 old people, 51 invalids. So, um, one hospital train, one train for everybody else who's fit, mm -hmm. and one for the gear. That's better than, say, um, how many? 50 buses? Buses and lorries, yes. Greg Preston's looking to see if there's a way through to the M3. Jim Foster and Ken Willis can drive bulldozers. Otherwise, it's Clapham Junction. And Charles Vaughan is doing a rail survey. Right, now, now just... let me finish. The real problem is the advance party. It always was. Well, they must have fast access back here to the hospital if anything should go wrong. So? Well, do we establish a first aid post at Sunbury? No, we couldn't stop it. And we need to make a fast clear way from here to, say, a ride or cows. Have we anyone who can pilot a hovercraft? Tony Maxwell. And Greg, he could have a go. You weren't sure of him. Well, if he comes back, it makes sense. Could he take a party down, about 40? No way. He goes ahead of the advance party. Ahead? Yeah, to have a go at the rats. Remember that stuff we used on the rats in the old days? Oh, you mean yellow phosphorus, red squirrel? Yeah, well, Benji's come up with some. He found a load of it in a warehouse down Wandsworth Way. Now, what I thought was, we put Greg in a truck or a lorry with a couple of other lads, um, Wally, for instance, mm. loaded up with a red squirrel, Operation Rat Dial of White. Here we come. Then we send in the advance party. Yes, yes, he is. Do you want... All right, I'll tell him. An emergency. Right. Hello, Santa, over. Hello, Santa, are you there? Hello, Santa, you lazy slob. Wake up. Hello, yeah. Hello, Penny. We are turning back now. We're going to try for... where? Across to Kingston. Across to Kingston. No, don't do that. The railways are checking out, okay? So you come back home, 
Found it. If we only knew when it's all going to end. Oh, come on. Things aren't nearly as bad now as when I arrived. And there haven't been any new cases of the sickness. I know. But how well do you know your epidemiology? Not very well. Well, epidemics were my business, really. I want to keep up morale, Ruth. But you and I have got to face facts. There's no ignoring this. All right, so we've had no new cases for a week. But we mustn't let it delay the move. What we've got to do is... Ruth. Ruth, help me. Missy! So how far did you get, Charles? Nearly to Woking. Now, the line looks sound enough. It could be clear all the way to Southampton. So all we have to do is to open up a path between here and Clapham Junction. Well, you've got the bulldozers. Could be difficult. Tony says the storage tank's right down. So this oil train's the last. Yeah, but well, tomorrow I'll look for another storage tank. Down river, I suppose. Well, it's encouraging there have been no more cases of London sickness in a week. Yeah, great, great. Hey, where's Ruth? Come to that, where's all the medicos? But you'll still want to get out of London by the summer. Well... I thought that was the idea. It's got to be done properly, Greg. It needs planning, careful planning, right, Barbara? Yes. Yeah, well, I happen to be in a hurry. Are you? Me too. And Ruth. If Greg's to proceed the advance party, If I'm, I'm what? Uh, uh, all in good time, Greg, boy, all in good time. Oh, really? Let's hear it. Well, the sooner the rat problem is settled, the better. We're not hampered by having to establish lines of communication. Right. They just get in there with the old red squill. Hey! That should be right up your street, Greg. What are you talking about? Do you want to see? Yes. Yes. Here you go. Did you make it? Sure. And they were all right? Yeah. Great place you got there. <laughs> and you kept your distance? Yeah. I told him he'd be staying here for a while, and that's fine. They're coping all right. Uh, come on, come on, let's all hear it. They wanted to give me things for you, but I said better not. Oh, quite right. Pet says... Stay away from the girls. <laughs> uh, me? <laughs> and Jenny says the baby's fine. And this is Sky Hubert said to tell Ruth that he cured Daisy's sore tits by rubbing them with Ruth's carbolic. What? <laughs> oh, Daisy's one of our cows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, let's have some supper. Wally, I'm very grateful to you. Yeah, thanks. All right? Well, it's up to you now, son. Go and clean up. Come back for the leftovers. Wally. Done. What's he trying to say? You've known him longer than I have. I don't know. The man had a dream and I was part of it. But I don't claim to know him. Not well. You're the doctor. No. Yes, Ruth, yes. He's dying. What's he trying to say? Gone. Come on, you lot. Supper time. Get out. Go on, get out. Okay, Manny, you're on. Londoners, this is Manny. I'm sorry, it's bad news. It's sad news. I don't know how to give it to you, so I'm going to give it to you straight. The doc's gone. He died a few minutes ago. Now, this is a great loss. The doc was a great man. He was a man of courage, vision, and foresight. He had vision to see that he couldn't go on much longer working so hard for us the way that he did. So what did this great man do? 
He found a replacement doctor for us. From now on, his place will be taken by Dr. Roof. Hope it won't be long before you all get the chance to meet her, but, but don't get me wrong, not as patients. But when you do meet her, you'll see for yourself that she's determined to carry on the old doc's work. So that, in time, we'll be able to make the big move. Well, that's about it. Good night. In time, there's a lot dear Emmanuel hides from people. There he is, my friend. He kept me going. All of us. He gave his life to give us tomorrow. In time. You said in time, the big move. Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? I mean, it's bound to take a bit longer now. Will you do the rounds? Or will I? No, I'll go. I'll go with you. Hold on a wee minute, Manny. Look, we've all got to eat, haven't we? I don't think any of us is hungry. I'm going to turn in. It's leg. How's it feeling? It's no better. You better get Ruth to have another look at it. Yes. I want to have a few words with Manny. Yes, good idea. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm starving. Will you stop talking about food? Oh. Well, I've got work to do. Good night. Good, good night. night. Nothing's changed, Nessie. The doc always said it was a two or three year job. Luckily, he didn't. There's only one thing that's not changed, and that's you, Emmanuel. You don't want to move. You never did. Big frog in a wee pond, that's you. I don't know why I put up with you. Perhaps because you know I'm indispensable. Look, we'll make the move as soon as it's feasible, all right? As soon as everything's properly planned, then we'll do it. You're favoring. What we can do now, the first thing, is to send a couple of lads on with that red squill Benji found. Greg and Charles, they're itching to get home. Give them something positive to do, keep them out of mischief. Ruth and I can make the move. I thought we needed a doctor at either end. Not really. Well, then why didn't you say so before? It was always you and the doc. He was too old and too tired. Yeah, well, you're no chicken. <laughs> I'll see you out. No, I can't take a chance. Heavers. Look, you watch it, Nessie. With Ruth training a couple of kids, the time's not far off when you won't be all that indispensable. So you watch it, Mother McCree. We're back where we were in a year's time. A year? Year and a half time, two and a half years time. But we'll do it properly. And how long is that going to give Ruth? Working under the same pressure as the uh, doctor. Come on, Greg, she's a strong girl. Yeah, well, wasn't the doc a strong man? He had a year of it. The first year. All the load of it, and we had a bad time. And in two and a half years' time, what's the population going to be then? Up. Oh. There's 14 babies on the way that we know of. 15. 15? You know, Manny, for a so-called democratic man, you're really wedded to your own opinions. Oh, come on, Penny, you tell him. Look, Greg, Manny's always been open to persuasion. That's why he and the doctor got on so well. Well, I say we'd be stupid not to get out of London just as soon as we can. You just want to get home, well, don't you? Well, of course you? I do. Well, the folk here don't want to leave London, not to go off into the wilds. They want it all set up properly. They want, they want a good life They need there. more medical attention than Ruth can give them. Well, do you agree? Well, yeah, yeah, I suppose so, in a way. Well, he won't agree till she drops dead. What do you take me for? Well, come in, Wally. Come and sit down and pile in. I hope that little trip of yours has given you an appetite. Greg is right off his grub. Look, Charles worked it out that the survival rate after the death was about one in 5,000. Yeah, well, that's what Barbara reckons, OK, too. well, if that's right, there ought to be another five or six doctors somewhere. Yeah, well, so? Well, why don't you try and find one of them? Why don't you send out Wally, say, and, and a couple of others with him? But give him food, fuel, medical supplies, but just send him out and see if they can find one. 
That's why we came to your farm, Greg. For the same reasons you're suggesting now. More than you knew else. You, for instance? Yes, if you like. Yeah, well, well, I've got something more immediate planned for you two, but... But sure, sure, we can talk about oh, good. it. good. Well, that's a start. We've got to clear that way to clap. Well, can't we do the two things at the same time? Yeah, sure, sure. If, when I've thought about it, it still seems like a good idea. When well, Manny's thought about it. You watch it, Wally. Look, Greg, you know as well as I do. There's got to be one chain of command here. Yeah, I know. I'm at the top. Yeah, that's right. Is that a warning? You can take it how you like. One chain of command or the whole thing collapses. Uh, and by the whole thing, I'm talking about human beings. This community. I know that. I'm not challenging you. Good. Then we're mates. Medical supplies. He's going to hop it home. Now, Manny, Lord. you be careful. Nessie, this is Manny. Something's come up. I've got to tighten up on security. Now, listen. Don't give out any medical supplies. No, no, not to anyone. No. Not until I say different. Right. What you got picked out for me, then? Pardon? You said you got something picked out for him and me. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, um... We're going off on a little jaunt, you and me. Jaunt? Yeah. Tomorrow, you, me and George. What for? Petrol, son. We're going to look for another storage tank. Manny thinks of me and Greg as mischief makers. Oh, that's not true. It's absurd. Well, you tell him that. Come in. We're getting out of here. What? Three of us. It's fine because them's my sentiments. No, I've just left Manny. He's got no intention of getting out of London. It's all an act. Well, there you are. You see, I told you I heard him telling Nessie. Well, what are we waiting for? Ruth. She's not sure. What about Manny? Come on, he's power mad. He's not bothered about staying alive. All he's concerned with is status. There are 500 people here who need a doctor. Over 50 of them sick at this moment. All right, they've got Nessie. Nessie's not a doctor. Well, neither are you, for that matter. Oh, Greg. Look, there are people you know who need you. Most of the people here you've never even met. That's what makes me a doctor, not the qualifications. You were brought here by force. Yes. Well, you can be taken back by force. You and who else? Me. There's no future for these people, Ruth. You can't say that. Once we get to the Isle of Wight, we'll have room and fresh air and all... Ruth, they will never get out of London. Now, I've heard Manny. He'll come up with another reason, another excuse, another justification. He's planning the move in two years' time. He'd be happier if it were five. What about the others? They have some say? But Manny's not interested in what they've got to say. He tried arguing with him. All right, Wally boy! Off you go! Where? We're looking for petrol, aren't we? Try over there. There's nothing over there. How do you know? Seek, and you shall find, Wally boy. We'll go on ship. <laughs> Wally! Without the bike. Hey, hang about. Sorry. I need the bike. Well, come on. I can't wait all day! Three more cases. This one's the worst. What are we going to do? Come and sit down. You're tired and I'm tired. She's dying. Dying's the most natural thing in the world. We can only do what we can. No. Ruth, 
The only reason I wanted to become a nurse was to get away from home. So I stuck in. I was a shop at Wee Things. There was no great queue of handsome young doctors after me, except as I bet. I stayed on and I finished up a matron. I got the MBE three years ago. I think it's about time I tried to earn it. What are you trying to say? I feel now I'm old enough and kind of placid enough to have a go. You've got to leave here, dearie. Charles was telling me about that settlement of yours. Sounds a grand place. It is. Listen, I've seen you pepping yourself up, keeping yourself going. Why not you and me swap places? I'll manage. You saying I'm no good? No, but I'd say you're too involved. And the top one here has to be strong enough to deal with our Emmanuel. You can do nothing for the people here for all your dedication. You're wiser than me. At least I can comfort them. <laughs> There's a bag over there. I've given you a whole load. It should last you some time. A good long time. London calling. Hello. Where's Manny? Oh, he's gone out with the petrol. No, that's fine, because we're taking some. You're what? We're leaving. Oh, really? Yeah. And we'll use these if we have to. I can't very well stop you, can I? Well, I want petrol for that Range Rover. Only enough to get us back where we came from. Yeah, OK, fine. All right, guys, a chit, shall I? That's very kind of you. Amor, you can give me a hand with this. What? Take this over to Benji and tell him that Manny authorised it. OK? OK, if you're sure. Yeah, sure I'm sure. Well, good luck. You know where to find us, should you miss the lights of London. Good luck to you, too. Sent it to Manny. Sent it to Manny, over. What do you want? I've got some good news for you. We're leaving. Now. And we'll carry you if necessary. No need. No. That's wrong. Ruth can't go. What? These are not my orders. Not orders? Well, well, well. Now, what do we do with him? I'll well, take him with us. Just one wrong word out of you. Now get us out of here. Manny. What's the good news, Lum? Which way did you come in? Through a bank. Oh, well, you must have passed them then. Who? Greg and Charles. Where are they off to then? Home. Did you let them? I couldn't very well stop them, could I? They had a couple of guns. Oh, that's a good reason. Here. I thought you'd be pleased. Eh? To get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it saves me the trouble. Which way'd they go? Same way they come. I gave them ten gallons of petrol. You didn't have to overdo it. Look, Manny, we got worse troubles than them. We got three more cases of London sickness. Oh. Three. What are we gonna do? Oh, Ruth, I think of something. Bessie, where's Ruth? Sick leave. She's not one of the three. If you're looking for Ruth, she's gone. Gone? You know, Emmanuel, speaking as your senior medical officer, I don't think you're looking very well. 
Come on, you'll need that. Ten gallons of petrol. Ruth with them. Are your glands up? No. You'll be all right, then. I'll give you something to kill the pain. Just down by the others. Sorry, no water, I'm afraid. Cheers. Sorry, friends! I don't think this is a very good idea! And don't think I'm not prepared to use this! Get down on the track, quickly. You join them. See how far that will get you. George, come back! Oh, don't. No, don't. Get round to the back of the truck and see if you can pull it. That's all we need. That's the point. I'll take a look. But don't take too long. We can't wait here. Right. We're better off on foot anyway. This will only slow us up. Could you get up into the truck? Pass down the essentials. Wake me up then. Drugs and petrol. Aye. 
These are all electric. There's no sign of a lever. Come and give us a hand. That's no good unless I can find the junction box. Keep an eye on the rear, will you? What? For Manny. You can tell Greg that all the switching's done upstairs. What's it? All right, Greg, come over here and start pushing. We're going back. Ruth, you're staying with us. So you better get used to the idea. Now, come on! You stay where you are, Greg. What? I can count if you can't. You've only got one round left in that gun. So you take your choice, Manny. Heads we win, tails you lose. Only one round, Charles. And there's four more. This is George's gun. All right, now come on and drop your guns. Otherwise, she gets it. You're bluffing. Of course. Come on! Who's there? Who is it? Wally. Yeah. Is he dead? Yes. It's what he tried to do to me. Are you hurt? Got a knock on the head. I'll be all right. Well, we're going home. Why don't you come with us? Yes. No, thanks. Not my scene. Is Nessie all right? Fighting fit. I've got a job to do. I'm gonna find one of those doctors, help the old girl out. I'll come your way, I'll give you a hand. Well, Abby sent for you. She told us where you were. She asked us to come and get you. She wants you. She, she said that you would come. You said she was ill? Yeah. And her son? Yes. What's wrong with them? Look, love, you really don't have the choice. Gave me ten gallons and a thousand cigarettes. Well, for the lads, like. And matches. And makeup. Yeah. And a hospital. Soap? Yes, yeah, soap, bump. We got everything. We got electric light. I think we should be off. It is urgent. I'm not coming. Please. Abby must take her chance. You have a doctor. My friends need me. Not only them, there are other settlements. In London, they need you more. You've got to come. I haven't got to come, and you can't make me. Please. You know we can, but don't force us to. It will be very unpleasant. What about you? Are you going to stand by and let them do this? 
don't know what you're on about. Our slot probably won't be far behind you once we get the car going. Things are great there, by the sound of it. What about my friends? Oh, that'll be taken care of, Ducky. He's, uh, he's going to send someone. I wonder. One of the lads. I'm sending him. Disinfect the cut. Yeah, all right. Use all I give you. OK, don't worry. feel terrible. Look, I'm sorry. Please don't be scared. It's just that we couldn't very well walk up to you in your settlement and say, come to London, will you? As you just said no. Would I? Well, wouldn't you? That's why we pretended we came from that place. You said a lot of people. How many? You've been told to say nothing till you see for yourself. take us to get to Denning Farm? Well, if you left early enough. I suppose you could get there and back in a day. Mm, I'd love to see Abby again. Well, I don't think it'd be wise, just yet. Not for sickness, though. Got to think of Paul. Oh, so have you. Anyway, I don't mean now. Uh, all the same, I'd, I'd like to take a ride over there. Greg. Don't worry about that smell. It's London. Anything about that smell. In a few hours, you won't even notice it. A cigarette, please. Have one. No. Go on, it helps. Get your gear together now. We're not going to have a chance once we get out. Rats with those things. The noise helps to keep them off. I can't get this thing any closer. go in packs. If you meet one of them on its own, that means it's dying. But it is just as dangerous. Please come. Those fires. To be scientific, they are started by spontaneous combustion. Heaps of bodies. Or heaps of something. I don't know.
Who's there? You won't get rid of me. I'll get back. You see. I'll get back. Put your things on. Right then. It's all right. I'm quite well. That's as may be. Who are you? What you want? My name's Greg. I'm looking for a woman called Abby. Abby Grant. Who? This is Denning Farm, isn't it? Yeah. I'm looking for a woman and her son. Abby and Peter. They're both ill. No one like that here. Well, there is a settlement here. <laughs> what? Some people. <laughs> Just the four lads and me. Well, what about Ruth? Who? Look, a man and a woman came from here looking for a doctor. Now, where are they? The man was Indian. Oh, them! Well, they didn't stop. They went on. Well, they went on where? London! What? In a car. Range Rover. They borrowed my horse and cart. Don't know why. Said I've got to disinfect it. Daft. Well, did they leave a route? Did they say which roads they were taking? Oh, you mean one of their maps? Yeah, they gave us some. You know, for when we go. Do you want one? They said to give them out. Could you get me one? Yeah. Uh, uh, just a minute. Um, well, Ruth, uh, the younger one. Or didn't she leave a message to get in touch with her friends? No. Nothing. <laughs> Cross my heart. Could you get me one of those maps? As quickly as you can. This is Manny, the centre. I got a bit of sad news about poor old Mac. His troubles are over. And we're going to miss him at radio. Still, an enormous good wish for us all, whatever we're doing today, young and old. That's all. Call you in an hour.
Morning, Doctor. Did you sleep well? Yes. This is the Oval, isn't it? Yes, the Oval Cricket Grounds. Were you a keen follower of cricket? No. Well, I saw two matches here. One was uh, Surrey against Nottinghamshire, and the other was uh, the last test match. I wasn't a keen follower. Some of them were. Well, as you see, we have here eggs, milk, and we are going to have uh, our own vegetables and some corn, I believe. How do you keep the rats out? Electric fence, and we are very, very careful. Dr. Ruth, anyway. That's you. The doctor is here. Won't you come to the surgery as soon as convenient? Okay. Yes? Good morning. Where's the doctor? He's having a sleep. He was up most of the night. Well, have you come to a decision? How can I come to a decision? It's being forced on me, the same as coming here was forced on me. I see. While you're making up your mind, Doctor, will you be so kind as to help on one or two cases? If I can. Good morning, everybody. And how are we all this morning? I've brought you a new doctor, Dr. Ruth. She's come to have a look at us, so we'll have no more grumbles, will we? Well, Kevin, my lad, and how did you sleep? Did you take your breakfast? Sit up a wee bit. Now. Hello. What's your name? Maisie. Yes. What are you here for, then? Hello. You've been having toothache. Have I? It says here they took out a tooth. Open. The back one. Was it a big one? Yeah. And you're taking a pills? Yep. Do you think it was your big black tooth that gave you the tummy ache? Yeah. You don't have any fever. I think you can get up today and help. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Manny. Just to say, we're going to have a funeral for Matt this afternoon, after the doc's done his report. I'm also going to take over the radio. He's been reading it up. Well, I'm going out now to have a look at the coal situation at Battersea, because we're going to run low soon. I'll tell you tonight if I've had any luck. TTFN! Doctor. Hello, Doctor. My name's Barbara. Hello, Barbara. How are you? Well, I need to be up and about. We mustn't rush things. How's the cut? It wasn't a cut, it was just a scrape. One can't do anything here, but it goes bad. You still have some fever. I have to get back to work. Well, how long shall I be here? Until everything's behaving itself. There's no point in getting up before then. Um, may I explain? Please. I'm the planner for all these people. I was in the civil service before, so I know a bit about logistics. I thought Manny did all the planning. Well, he does the day-to-day. -day, but I'm planning the big move. The big move? The one you're here for. We can't do the move without a doctor at either end. Oh, yes, of course. That's why I have to be working. Well, moving 500 people is a big logistical problem. And the doctor wouldn't be content with anything less than 500. He says it's the minimum needed for the human species to survive. Yes. The only trouble is... I don't really know enough about the other end. The other end? The Isle of Wight. Oh, yes, of course. I don't know how much clearance is involved and what the fuel and power situation is. I mean, it's, it's always been at least a two-year plan to get the agriculture going and the life support systems. And frankly, I don't see how it can be done any quicker. But at least I can make sure that the lines of communication work. <laughs> south now, under the river. It's messy, but the big danger is flooding. Yeah. I never did like going under the river. Come on now.
That's our petrol supply coming in. Hello, Benji. This way, please. More rats? Yes. We go up this way now. When we go out, stay in the light. It keeps the rats away. Turn it off. They're in now. Well, be the new doctor. This is George. I'm glad you're here. I'll just check you didn't bring anything in with you. Yeah, OK. okay. What's that? Oh, films. We like family shows mostly. Hey, what's on? Laurel and Hardy. Oh. <laughs> See. Yeah. Come on. Oh, look. There is someone here who will answer all your questions. Karen. Oh. Hello, Manny. Penny, you're back. You yeah, made it. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> uh, uh. Hello, Doctor. Well, I'm sorry they had to bring you like this. Put your gear down and shake hands. I'm Manny. I know your roof. Well, come on, love. You're here. Welcome. All right, Umble? All right, Manny. Thank you. Everybody's very grateful to you. That's all right. I'll clean up now. See you later. OK, great. How was it? Oh, not bad. They risked their lives to bring you here. Bring me where? Haven't you told her? No. Right, hang on. Hello, Manny. Yep. Yep, she's here. All in one piece. Well, a bit shell-shocked. Yeah. Yeah, they had to. You coming over? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, that's all right. I understand. Yep. Yeah, that's OK. OK, see you. This is what you might call my private exchange. It doesn't go very far, just round the house. The radio goes further. Well, come on. Grub up in five minutes. Ruth? Oh, come on, love. How was the tunnel? How do I answer that? Well, but what I mean it is... It was dry. Good. If it had been wet, you wouldn't have got through. The river would have all slopped over. We've been waiting for that to happen. Here, have a cigarette. Oh, You'd have had to come round a long way. Where's Abby? Well, I wish I knew. I thought she was a nice girl, a bit bossy, but I liked her. You told me she was here. Well, she was, Ruth, honestly. She was standing right where you are now. I remember when she first came here. Yeah, she was looking for her son, Peter. I was told she'd found him. Well, I had to play that by ear, didn't I? All she cared about was that boy of hers. I mean, we tried to stop her leading. She wouldn't listen to reason. Just off, just like yeah. that. I mean, I was very sorry. She'd have been useful here. 
When did she go? About a month ago. She won't have lasted long. You abducted me. I'm sorry. We had no choice. I had my orders for Get me out of here. Please. Please, Ruth. Don't think too badly of us. Come on through. Come on. Oh, come on, Ruth. Come on. Well, now, what have we got here? God, oh, roast duck. Well, I wonder where that came from. Buckingham Palace Gardens or the Serpentine? Well, make a change from pigeons and uh, sprouts. Winter greens. Come on, Ruth, please, be my guest. Hot water, Ruth. And soap. I'll tell you what. I'll play you a tape that Mac picked up at his radio. Mac's our radio expert. You mean a broadcast from outside? Yeah. Mac's been trying for a year. This is the first time he's got anything. Come and listen. If listen you to hear this. me, come to the Malik in Cairo. Come to the Malik in Cairo. There are only 12 people here. People have food and fuel. Come to the Malik in Cairo. That's it. When was that broadcast? About six weeks ago. Mac tried to call them back, but he reckoned they didn't know about the set. This guy called every day for four days. Then nothing. Here, Ruth. Good girl. Why have you brought me here? Look, all right, all right, all right, all right! Sorry. That extra place was set for the doctor. He was going to eat with us and answer all your questions. Now he comes. I don't think I can go on. I know you can't. You need that girl. I'm supposing she won't come. She must be made to come. No. Had you any choice? No. She's a doctor. Once she's here, she'll understand. Well, she mustn't be harmed. If she's harmed, she wouldn't be any use to us, would she? So be it. White Cross? Yes. 
Yes, it is. Are you well? Yes, we are very well. And you? Yeah, no, we're fine. Well, where are you from? Dunning Farm, near Evesham. And how many of you are there? Just the two of us. No, I mean at the farm. Oh, not many. Twelve. We've been there since the summer. We tried to find you at the Grange place, but it was burned down. Yes, that's right. We saw your notice there saying that you'd come on here. You mean you were looking for us? Yes, that's right. We were told how to get to the Grange so that we could find you. Your name wouldn't be Greg, would it? Yes. Ah, then we have some regards to give you, Greg, from a lady called Abby Grant. What? No, please. Better to keep apart. We are well, but others of us are not. Yes, you're right. Well, where are they? Did she find Peter? Oh, yes, yes, she did. He's with her. She found him? Never give up, Greg. Well, where are they? They're at Denning. But they're ill. She said you had a doctor here, Ruth. Yes, that's right. Have you still got that doctor? Yes, she's here. Well, what's wrong with them? It sounds like a kind of toxemia. Blood poisoning. I won't know till I get there. How long do they say they've been at this place? Well, since the summer. Abby must have been on her way back. Well, there's something about it I don't like. What? I don't know. Can't put my finger on it. Do you want to take a look? Well, I'd like to see Abby again. Oh, yes. No. They've probably got an epidemic. Stay away. It's a very good point. They were being very careful. What about Ruth? I don't have much choice, do I? Well, I don't know. I still don't like it. I mean, why haven't we heard of these people before? Well, we'll get your exact route from you, as usual. We have a route from you. Which road you're taking? Yes, most certainly. Uh, the B4219, till it hits the uh, A38. Then the A40 and the A44 to Evesham. Just before Evesham, there is uh, a hill and a bridge. You take a little track to the left, and uh, the third branch, the middle branch of three, and that's us. It'll take you through the town of Pershaw, won't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Did you actually go through Pershaw? Yes. What about infection? Uh, oh, no, we, we skirted around it. Uh, we didn't go through it. No, of course not. Uh, a little to the south. Well, what about Abby, before she became ill? Was she still our plump little self? <laughs> You're checking on us now. <laughs> I think they are. Abby is tall and slim. She's younger than me. She had her hair all cut short. It's growing now. Okay. Pass. Is there nothing you want? Oh, no, thank you. No, we got food and drink and a stove, uh, things like that. We should be there before night. This one. I'm Ruth, the doctor. Hey, well, no. No, don't go near him. Where are they? Who? The people who are ill. Abby is not here. What's going on? I'm afraid we had to practice a little deception. Where's Abby? London. Just the four lads here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them. London? Look, we keep our distance from people we meet, from him, from your friends, so as not to touch them with what we bring from London. But you are contaminated now, being with us. You can't go back to your friends. 
You will kill them. Contaminated with what? We don't know. We call it the London sickness. And you too have it? We don't know. What are the symptoms? You feel very tired and sort of paralyzed with it. Then you need treatment. We are pushing our luck coming out as far as this. Yeah, but we've got a hospital in London. We've got doctors, x-rays, the lot, and we want to get back there. All right, yes, there is a lot of disease in London, but we're all right there. We're well looked after. You've got a doctor. Why do you need me? I'll be here, because when I called him just now, he got an emergency. Take me to him. All right, love. Nessie, this is Ruth. Come in, come in, Doctor. I'm the matron, assistant surgeon, anaesthetist and general factotum. My name's Nessie. We're not aseptic in here. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Yes, that's his lordship there, the doctor. I'm very glad you're here. Come and have a look at this. You didn't qualify? No. I did four and a half years. That's fair enough. This man has what we call the London sickness. The first cases were about two months ago. Rapid onset, slight fever. When he's conscious, sharp-witted and acute fatigue in all his muscles. I don't know what it is. It's years since I did any medicine, proper medicine, I mean. I was a health officer. But here we are. Come and sit down, please. I heard about you from Abbey Grant. My dear, I knew that if I could just talk to you, I could persuade you to help me. So, uh, I'm afraid I had you brought here. I'm really sorry about it. Please forgive me, but I had to. Now, uh, may I fill the background in for you? Yes, please. Well, about a year ago, when the plague struck us, I seemed to be the only doctor left in London. I met Manny. Uh, you've met him? Yes. Well, he managed to keep a couple of generators going and built up an organization. With some help from the doctor? <laughs> yes, Nessie, we were in it together. Then Nessie came along and propped us up. He's waking, doctor. Ah, come. Hello, Mac, how are you? This is Ruth, another doctor. Say hello. He knows what's going on, don't you? Are you the radio engineer? I heard a tape of yours. That's right. Can we do a little test, Mac? Can you blink five times? Thanks, Mac. We're going to get you well. We need you. God knows we need everyone. Look, would you mind explaining to me exactly... How's your biochemistry? What's weariness caused by? Lactic acid in the tissues. Not being properly degraded. Mm. Have you come across this? No. Well, it seems to be peculiar to London. The London sickness. Our main work here is medicine, not surgery, except for emergency and orthopedic. We don't have a blood bank, but we do have radiography. How many? Londoners? Well, there were about a thousand. A lot of them ill with typhoid, a dysentery sort of thing. And the number fell right down to about 500. Alarming, but uh, it's fairly stable now. We have as many births as deaths. 500 Londoners we are. A man, he must have told you that we forage. Yes. I suppose you can get just about anything. Well, we've no blood or serum. We have some fresh food and vegetables. A high sickness rate. How high? 10%. Fifty patients in various stages. Cuts and scratches go septic. There seems to be a general poison in the atmosphere, so we pump everybody full of antibiotics. How is he? Going. 
We don't know about the London sickness. Mac. Mac. Poor fellow. I'll do the autopsy, but I shan't find anything. I don't know what to look for. When did he get ill? Three days ago. You see, Ruth, as a statistician, I know that our 500 cells have about 100 breeding pairs, right? Yes. About 100 couples who can have children. And that's the lower limit for the human race. If we sink below that, we have a fair chance of extinction in a few generations. Uh, like your settlements. They won't survive. They're too small. London's about the only place on Earth where so many people would be together still after the sickness. Or maybe Tokyo, New York. But we haven't heard from them. We heard from Cairo. Twelve. If you want my opinion, I don't think there's any chance of lasting out here. That's from what I've seen. Nessie? Nessie! He hasn't got the sickness. He's just weary. He's all right. What? Oh, sorry. Will you do the surgery tonight, Doctor? Me? No, she won't. Ruth has a decision to make. We forced her to come here. I'd like you to have a peaceful night, Ruth, and consider it. Consider what? Oh, I consider it right. I'll do the rounds. We have quite a bit of equipment here. Two trained nurses and Nessie. Some children who've done science at O-level. We're trying to teach them. We need to start a medical school. I'll get someone to show you your room. Sorry, was I staring? Did I say welcome? Oh, yes. Here you are, then. They gave me a lick of paint for you, and uh, I had a go at those curtains myself. We'll have some supper sent in for you in a minute. Well, Ruth, I, I hope you'll be comfortable. Can you give me a few minutes before supper? Yeah, sure. 